Okay, welcome everyone to this continuation of what are my favorite theorems, fields, fields, whatever it is, a value bias collection. Um, today I would like to tell you about games, and games have been around in mathematics for a long time. So it turns out uh, a lot of mathematicians were into dice games and card games and all that fun stuff, uh, where you can make money or you can lose money. And eventually event, it invented something like probability theory to be sure, like if you roll three dice, what is the probability that, whatever, well, you know. Um, but that's not the type of game the game theory is all about, because the game theory is more about decision type games. While the original form of how games entered mathematics was, as I said, like this is a probability type of uh, probability version where, well, how many options are there, or how, what is the probability that a, a dice rolls, blah, you know. Um, again, mathematicians were pretty much into those games. Not so sure whether mathematicians actually were into uh, the decision type games. And I'll show you one decision type game, which is maybe not the most popular one. I will have the most popular one as well, because that's just how it goes. But it's a kind of a nice one. And it kind of tries to, well, the way to read this is that actually game theory is, is, is rigorous mathematics, but it always has some, some modeling type of approach in mind. So you always want to model something and maybe then get some explanation why the world is like X, Y, Z. And I would always like you to encourage this, to keep this in mind, that every game has some kind of, it's a toy model of some real world behavior. And again, and then the kind of the emphasis here is on toy model. Of course, in nature, uh, life itself is pretty complicated. So mathematics, actually, many people get that wrong. Mathematics is easy because you can eventually even proof everything um, and in real life there's no way you prove anything it's just too complicated and so this is a toy model and my favorite toy model here we go after this long uh, ramble is the hawk versus dove game so um yeah here's a hawk here's a dove and essentially you should think of this you, you can really think of the birds but and then kind of try to think of the this is modeling how the population of birds behaves but it's probably better to think of it as more like nations and diplomacy i leave the interpretation to you but anyway it's a very simple game um there's a hawk strategy yeah so that's as i said better to think of this like a strategy game so you can be a hawk or you can be, the better way of saying this is the following you can be a follower yeah you can be a follower here's a follower or you can be a leader, here's the leader, and yeah. Um, the outcome of this video will be that you shouldn't be a follower, you should be a leader. Anyway, think of it as a strategy, and one of them is you're very aggressive. Uh, good leadership, by the way, has nothing to do with aggression, so my leader-follower analogy is a bit off, but maybe not too much. Anyway, attacking is kind of a strategy here, and the other one is you retreat, essentially. Unless you hit someone uh, who is like you, then, then you kind of share. So more mathematically, you have a reward function, um, some reward, we can think of it as like 3 or something, some, some value uh, V, and some damage C. And well, two players play against one another, and if a hawk meets a hawk, they try to get the reward, but you always attack, so they fight, but they're equally strong, so it kind of gets a bit nasty, so they fight. Um, both of them get, get some reward, but there will be some damage because of a fight. If the leader meets the follower, then the leader gets everything. And if the follower meets the follower, then they just share the reward. It's kind of the type of game I would like to have you in mind. And maybe you know that under a different name. I also have seen this under the name Chicken, um, like Chicken Out. But yeah, for, kind of, I like this analogy more with the, with the leader and the follower, if you want. Keep in mind, if you're ever in an interview, you're a leader, not a follower. Well, okay, just keep that in mind. Anyway, so you can put this in a matrix to make this kind of easier. To, it's exactly the same, and you can choose specific values. Let's say, um, usually I want C to be bigger than V, because this guy should be negative, so it should be the damage, right? So if Hawk attacks Hawk, if Hawk and Hawk meet, uh, both of them get some damage, so let's say a minus one. If uh, the leader meets the follower, then the leader gets everything and the, the follower, well, doesn't get anything. But it's also not hurt because they flee. Not so, no, it's not so bad, it's pretty smart, so they flee. And similarly in the kind of symmetric, the other way around. And if both of the 
uh, followers meet, then they just share the reward. Kind of this is type of the, the explicit example, typical example of a payoff matrix of this game. Hope the game is reasonably clear. It's kind of very simple. Um, and it was originally actually really discussed. Well, depends a bit whether, whether it was, was a common to call it really chicken, which is more the diplomatic type game, or really hawk or dove, which is really the more the nature game. It was really discussed in the sense of how um, kind of different populations of birds uh, kind of grow and behave with one another. If you've ever seen uh, someone dropping some food and there will be a bunch of doves, just pigeons just trying to get the food um, and they all get something. So this is maybe not so bad. I've never seen any hawks competing, but uh, this apparently is also realistic. Uh, and I've also never seen this, but probably that's also how it is. I have no idea. I only know, I don't know the brute one. Anyway, so this is kind of where it originally came from, and it kind of makes sense, but as I said, you should think of this more like as being a strategy game, and maybe your country, and your maybe a reward is some, some resource you want to have, and it's a kind of a matter of whether you attack, or whether you kind of be uh, peaceful. Mm -hmm. And kind of the disappointing news, I say it again, is that attacking usually is better, um, at least in this little game. That's why I would like to turn it around and I just say, tell you the story of the follower and the leader. Being a leader is better than being a follower. Uh, anyway, so here's kind of this type of payoff matrix you get. And the question kind of game theory would ask, uh, usually nowadays, obviously, for more, more difficult games, for more um, real world models. This is a really toy model, a tiny toy model. Keep that in mind. Uh, so how does the system change if you change B or C? And what really matters here is, as you can always see it, is kind of the difference between uh, maybe a different color is a little bit better, the difference between V and C, right? That's kind of the, the, the real thing. So if there is, for example, uh, not much of, uh, well, uh, if the, the damage is actually pretty tiny compared to the reward, the hawk strategy should be kind of more prominent in the long run. And if the damage is high compared to the reward, then the leader strategy is usually bad. Oh, no, that's kind of kind of what you expect. And the interesting thing is, well, I'll show you an animation in a second, kind of the evolution of the system depending on um, the parameters. So essentially what you should think of is you have there are two players playing, a player here and a player here, or in general, whatever, how many players. And they always paired with one another and they get some rewards and they adjust their strategy depending on what they get. Well, and well, let's say um, this, here we have the, the responses, the choices of the players with Dove being here and Hawk being here. So the pr probability of choosing to be a follower. And we are interested in the fixed points of the system. And kind of what you should usually should do is the following kind of map that onto uh, a nice type of picture here and you can see here V V is fixed as I said the only real difference is uh, the only thing that really matters is the difference between V and C so we can just fix V and vary C so if C is very high now uh, let me go back to the slides if C is very high then the damage is very high if C is very low in particular if V is C then there is no damage. So there should be some behavior of that type of form and you can literally see it. So we start with a high value and go lower and eventually the fixed point of the system is that both should play Hawk. It's kind of the optimal strategy. While in the in the middle it's not, not completely clear what the optimal strategy is supposed to be, but at least if, if there is no damage, right? If there's no damage then definitely you should be a Hawk. Uh, that's kind of for sure. And you kind of want to analyze how this kind of behaves uh, depending on various values. And now you should think of, I have a way more complicated type of behavior uh, system, way more complicated game I would like to play. And in this case, case there are actually only, um, there's only one solid state, which is a fixed point of the system. And historically people were computing those fixed points using like the fixed point theorems you might've seen from topology, uh, but you can now just plot it if you want. And I have two models. Uh, the one population model you play against yourself, that, that's a bit strange, I guess. But anyway, you can do that. And of course, this is just a line in this plot. And the kind of fun is it will uh, eventually go to some. So all the arrows are pointing like this and all the arrows here are pointing like this. Eventually, it will kind of stay with some non-zero, non-one probability. 
um, it's kind of converged mixed strategy type of thing. In the more realistic, I guess, two population model, which is like this guy here, and you can essentially see what's happening. So all the arrows are pointing like, like this. Eventually, the fixed point will be a pure strategy where one of one is a leader and one is a follower. And this is what I meant from before. If one is this kind of the the fixed point of the system, the long-term behavior. And just say it again, yeah. In this matrix, if you are the leader and your opponent is a follower, that's much better than the other way around, right? So just just be sure, because we're always in this situation where you get everything and the other one doesn't get damaged but also doesn't get anything yeah so this is kind of a fun type of thing and um, how this really applies to real world and whether my analogy with leader and follower is really true l let's not go into that that's 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 very much unclear but this is some of what game theory studies um kind of a strategy type model and what are the kind of the fixed points of the system um for long-term behavior of uh, the system like in this case the hawk and the dove. Uh, the more famous version is the prisoner's dilemma, which actually is a version of Hawk and Dove. Just uh, you just need to take the damage lower than the reward, which definitely let's have a look at the matrix again. So if those entries here are non-negative, yeah, and everything else is positive as well, then being a leader is certainly better than being uh, being a follower. And uh, essentially, the game turns into something different, and you can also study the behavior. Uh, under that and you get something that would be uh, like the prisoner's dilemma which i'm pretty sure you have seen at one point if you haven't it's just my uh my game screen or my game the game hawk versus dove where the reward is much bigger than the damage huh? so if the reward is bigger than the damage yeah you can imagine what happens anyway uh, i hope you enjoyed this video and i also hope to see you next time